Have you ever wondered why some people have success and others just don't seem to? Well, find out what separates successful people from those who fail today on the program. I'm Gary Cassie, and for nine years, we lived in a financial, chaotic, stress-filled, visionless life. I cried out to God. He said, you're living like many of my people are, living in debt. He said, I want my people free. Your financial freedom is closer than you think. America's financial coach, Gary Cassie, shares the kingdom principles that changed his life defeated his debt and set him free. Financial problems, they're slow death. We're trying to change the way you think about money. This is Gary Cassie, Fixing the Money Thing. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie. And I'm Drenda Cassie. Welcome to the program. Do you remember back in Sunday school when you read about Jericho and the walls that fell down? Well, do you know the most important part of that story is not that the walls fell down, it's what came afterward, right, Gary? It's exactly what right. What happened afterward? Well, that's a obviously a familiar story we heard in Sunday school, but the point that actually was the point was never made. Mm -hmm. It never was made when I learned it anyway. Right. I, the walls come tumbling down was the part that I remember, right? Right, they let out a shout, the walls yeah. came down. Yeah, and there's a little song they sing with that, yes. I think, you know. But, <laughs> but what uh, happened next? Well, the bottom line was is the point, not the walls. The walls were a hindrance to the point. The walls were what was trying to stop what was supposed to happen. And that was they were to take the city. Mm -hmm. In fact, let's go back to Joshua and just take a quick look at that scripture. In the sixth chapter of Joshua, verse two, it says this, the Lord said to Joshua, see, I like how he said that, see, uh, you know, I have delivered Jericho into your hands. Well, the walls are still standing when he said that. I have given you Jericho along with its king, the authority of the city, and its fighting men, the defense. He said, march around the city. He gives the instruction of marching around the city, of course, you know, the seventh time, and they blow the trumpets. And uh, when the trumpets sounded, the army shouted. At the sound of the trumpet, when the, man, the men gave a loud shout, the walls, walls came down. Came down. <laughs> yes. But you have to finish the sentence. So everyone charged straight in and they took the city. Mm. Now, if you remember right, when they crossed the Jordan River, Jericho was the first city they came to. God had given specific instruction that the wealth of that city, taking that city, would go into the treasury, mm. not into the men's hands, into the treasury. It was a type of tithe, if wow. you will. And so that what was in the city, they're going to take the city and they're going to take what was in the city and occupy it. Now, this is an important word. Occupy means that city changes legal jurisdiction. Wow. It comes under Israel's army. It comes under the jurisdiction of the kingdom of God at that point, right? That's great. And so the objective was not to knock the walls down. The objective was to take the city. Yes, I like that word charge. To yes. charge yes. the city and take it, yeah. that's good. I mean, that's a word that we all need to hear because so many times believers are taught to be passive and not to actually right. go take something. Exactly. And here's why. And this is the point of I want to make today is, as you said, passive. Most believers tend to view, this, view our walk in this life as defensive against the enemy, not offensive. So the Bible says this in Matthew 16, a very important point. I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Now, gates are protective. They are not offensive. See, Jesus stripped the enemy of any armor, or any protection. He has stripped him of authority, right? Right. We are on the offense. But most Christians view their walk with God as defensive. In the name of Jesus, you know, they're going to stop the devil. They're, see, most Christians think they've won the victory when they stop the devil from killing, stealing, and destroying. That is not the victory. That's the wall. Hmm. See, the wall, let's talk about someone who's an addict, okay? The addiction, being delivered from that addiction is not the victory. It is a victory. Correct. It's not the victory. Right. The victory is the destiny that that person has in the kingdom. Yes. The addiction is simply stopping the person from discovering and fulfilling their 
their destiny. vision and destiny for their life. So God when has. we come against the enemy's strongholds, the walls are down, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. We, we deliver people out of the strongholds of the enemy for a purpose. Mm -hmm. So for instance, Israel, when they came out of Egypt, they came across the Red Sea. That was a mighty act of deliverance, correct? Correct. It seems like most people in the church world love to celebrate the Red Sea deliverance. Mm. But what they don't remember is, is that they left Egypt to go somewhere. Yes. So God has delivered you from something to take you to exactly. something. Exactly. Not just to be, oh, I'm delivered. Exactly. Now I just exist. But no, I've been delivered from this so I can go to my destiny and do it. God that is exactly has called me right. to do. And debt's the same way. Debt holds people back That's right. from fulfilling their destiny. All kinds of things can set up walls and barriers in exactly. our life of course. to keep us from fulfilling what God has for us. So when we give a shout, we know the word of God, the mm -hmm. walls come down. But this is about what do we do once we've got the walls down, right? Well, the Bible says in John 10, 10, that a thief comes to steal, steal kill, kill, and destroy, destroy, okay? And so that's what people tend to, in the name of Jesus, you know, uh, stand against Satan. And that is important. That is important. Deliverance is important. Yes. But we are never uh, designed to stay at deliverance. Correct. But they have to read the rest of the sentence. John 10, 10. But thief I comes can. to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come to give them abundant life. Yes. So there's life after deliverance. Yes, yes. Okay? But as I said, most Christians view their, their, uh, their stance against the enemy as their success. I like what you said. It's defensive posturing. Defensive Instead posture. of thinking, you know, and a team that never takes a shot can never have a victory or can never get, well, so you yeah. can never score. Yeah. So if you never shoot, exactly. you never win. But on this team... The church seems like they don't know to even take a shot. Mm. They're, they spend their celebration time. In other words, again, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Right, it is right. a celebration when someone is coming out of debt or delivered right. from addiction or whatever is holding them hostage. That is a celebration. Yes. But if you don't teach them that their destiny is to occupy. See, destiny is always a place. Mm. Destiny is a place of occupation. And so God has a place where he has designed you specifically. You, you have gifts, talents, unique abilities. God is taking you someplace yes. where you can, uh, you remember the old uh, climbing that mountain and putting the stake in. I take this territory <laughs> for, you know, occupy. whatever government. <laughs> yes. We are to go and take territory and occupy it. That means bring it under the jurisdiction of the kingdom of God yes. on behalf of the kingdom of God. And occupy means you take dominion over that territory mm on behalf of the kingdom, and you administrate that occupation on behalf of the kingdom. That's good. But again, most people, most believers read that scripture about the gates of, of hell as a victory in the sense that they feel like Satan, those gates are stopping them from succeeding. They're, you know, they have this view that Satan has the power to stop them from succeeding when really you have the, th you have the authority. We have the offense. Mm. Satan has no legal jurisdiction here. Jesus has stripped him of his authority completely. All right. So we've got to let go of the, mount, the mindset, just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away. Oh, that's ridiculous. That's the attitude that says, I'm just, I'm just barely here. That's I'm just ridiculous. hanging on. It, it's a matter of going into battle and having victory, right? Exactly. We bind the enemy, the walls are down, but now we've got to march on in there and take the city, charge in there. So remember this, the walls tumbling at Jericho was not the victory. The walls were the hindrance. The victory was, what's the assignment? Mm. Take the city. Occupy it. Bring it under the dominion or jurisdiction of the kingdom of God. That's great. And it Every brought the person. treasure then into the kingdom right. of God. And so when people go out and they occupy, they take territory, whether it's in their business, their life, their family, ministry. The early people in our nation started hospitals and churches and schools take and territory. did all of these amazing things. They had a new nation, but they had to go and occupy that nation and set up. You have to. And, yeah. and it's a good example to me of just, we can't just sit back and be passive. Passivity will actually let the enemy encroach in every area of our lives. Exactly. I mean, God has given us the directive. He gave the church to not sit, but he said, go. Hmm. He said, go and preach the gospel, right? And he right. gave them offensive direction, an off offensive, that's not offensive right. uh, uh, mandate, if you will, yes. to go set the captives free. The battle's done. The walls are down. So this is the key. The walls are down, 
But as I said, it seems that most churches, if you hear the songs they sing and what they talk about, is about trying to get deliverance. They're stuck on the Red Sea. They're stuck on trying to get that enemy off their back. And there's a promise to get to, a promised land. There's a promise land. and authority mm-hmm. to, to, to enact that that's already been finished. We have the authority. Yes, we so, do. So, Dranda, I know uh, we'll talk more about this when we come back, but I want to set the posture here. As we come back, we're going to talk about what does that mean to take and occupy a little bit deeper because I believe it has a lot to do with your life and you getting where you're supposed to be and enjoying the benefits of the kingdom in your life. We'll be right back. It's time to defeat your debt and discover your destiny. Well, this is your financial revolution. Join Gary Cassie Sunday and Monday, September 17th and 18th at the Hope Cathedral in Jackson, New Jersey. And on Friday and Saturday, September 22nd and 23rd at Real Life Church in Greer, South Carolina to experience this groundbreaking financial revolution conference. You will never discover your destiny and your purpose until you fix the money thing. This is just the beginning of this incredible series, The Walls Are Down. As Wayne Gretzky, the hockey player, said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So I encourage you to get this resource and begin to apply it to your life. It'll really give you the courage, the motivation to do what you need to do next. Not just that the walls are down, not to play off defense, but to play offense as well. You know, Dorena, that's correct. It's an amazing series that'll help people understand how life works. As one stat says that I think it's like one third of the people that start a book finish it. Mm. Only two, you know, two thirds don't. Wow. So if your book's not there in the store, whether it's a great book or an amazing book, if you don't get it on the shelf, it's not going to ever get into anyone's people, hands. As pastors, we, we've, you know, we, we hear this a lot. God said, to do this, right. okay? God gave me an idea, I'm to start a business. Or God said this, I remember, uh, you know, we, our company, I had a lady once that she came to me all excited. Man, Gary, God said I'm to be involved with your company. I, you know, it's so good to hear God. And, and so, uh, you know, we were involved with uh, the insurance markets and securities markets and you know, helping people invest in retirement. And so I said, well, ride along with me and let's, let's start training, right? The first night that I took her on training, at the end of that night, she goes, I, I'm not doing this. Mm-hmm. She spent two weeks telling me, God said, God said. Now, mm-hmm. she was unemployed. She needed money. And God knew that behind that time period of learning was an opportunity of destiny for her. Right, but right. she was overwhelmed and saw that she felt she could not tackle that mm-hmm. on day one. But how many people never finish? You see, the walls can be intimidating. Right? The right. walls can be intimidating. Right. And God always calls us to do something that's bigger than that's exactly us. That's right. Because he's stretching us. He's growing us. And the things we're believing him for, the destiny he has mm-hmm. for you, it'll take change. But he's so wonderful to lead us through that change. And that's what I love about the yeah. series because you help us see it and you help us lead you know, you lead us through it so yes. we can get to yes. where God intended us to be. So yes. the walls are down. The walls are down. we got to obey God. Pl- uh, we, we do have to offensively take those things out of the way. Offensively. Yes. Offense. Move out. He has no authority. Now, this is now the wall. Remember the first spies that went into the land. Remember what they said. Hmm. In that land, we saw giants and walled cities. They backed out. Right. They, they stepped into unbelief. And the Bible says they wept because they had this promise. They were all going across this desert to get to and came out of slavery. And they were so excited till they saw what they thought was impossible. Mm. But what they need to understand is right past that is the promise. Yes. And so many people, Drenda, I let's talk about that. You know, the walls are real. If you're sick, you need healing. Sickness is real. Mm-hmm. All right. If you're addicted, that's real. Uh, people, if you're in debt, that's real. And so it's hard to dream dreams when you're bound in slavery to something, correct? Mm-hmm. correct. You, you don't have dreams as a slave. But the promise is there, and what we have to understand is that the walls are down. They're already down. Mm-hmm. Anything holding you hostage is illegal, but you have to enforce the will of God. You have to take up your authority, and you have to deal with it by the authority of the kingdom of God. But yes. it, has, it is an intimidating place 
but it is not reality in the sense that it has no legal jurisdiction to hold you there. Yes, I like what I like what it says about charging and yeah. taking the city because that shows you right there. It's military. It's it's in charge. You have to actually move in there. Well, that's after the walls you, are down. Yeah, like you said, you have to take that place. Yes, okay. I like that word, take it. The walls are down, mm -hmm. and so they had to get up. Notice the armed men. Remember, they circled the city. Mm -hmm. The armed men did not need to fight the battle for the walls to come down. Right? That battle is already won. God did it. And that's the same with Jesus. Jesus already paid the price. Satan has been defeated. But we still have to charge in. Mm -hmm. We have to take territory. We have to learn how to administrate it and bring it under the jurisdiction of the kingdom of God. That's good. Now, here's an interesting thing that I think we can talk about for a long time, but we won't have time for it. But you need to look at this. Mark 16, a great scripture. Jesus tells us, these signs will accompany those who believe. That's the 17th and 18th verse. In my name, in my authority, uh, they will drive out demons. Hmm. The walls are down. Get out of here. <laughs> out of the way, dude. Out. <laughs> All right. They'll speak in new tongues. Now we'll come back to that one. Pick up snakes with their hands. We're going to go into enemy-held territory. We're going to pick those things up and throw them aside. Uh, yes. it's, we're not going to worry about it yes, hurting us because it can't. Yes, it, yes. It, we have dominion over that. Then if they drink any deadly poison, it shall not harm them. Mm -hmm. Satan's, Satan has been defeated. We are not to be afraid to charge in, as you said. Mm -hmm. We're going to charge in, right? And we're going to lay hands on, on people, sick people, and they shall recover. So think of an occupying army. Think of World War II. All right, so Japan is defeated. Now an occupying force comes in and now begins to administrate that country. Hmm. An occupying army defeats the enemy. They then begin to occupy that territory, correct? Right. So God's kingdom is advancing and occup occupation is God's desire. Hmm. The, but the battle has been won. And let me go back to these things. Um, it's interesting that speaking in tongues is listed in Mark 16. Because there's nine spiritual gifts, right? Right. Why is it the only one Why? listed? <laughs> because these are marching orders. These are go in my name, get it done, you know, preach the gospel, and these signs will accompany those that go. Speaking in tongues, what does that do? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, we download mysteries. Right. Speaking in tongues is how our commanding officer directs us. It's like our walkie-talkie. That's so if good. If you're in military, you got radio, right? right? The enemy doesn't know what you're doing, but your commanding officer does. Yes. And he radios you. He can see the high picture. Go climb hill one. Go over that, you know, take that. So speaking in tongues brings us the mysteries or our game plan from the commanding officer in battle. We have the authority, right? We right. pick up snakes, can't hurt us. Right. We drink deadly poison. Sickness can't hurt us, but we still need direction. Good. We're, we're, on, we're on, a, on a mission, right? Yes. We, we need to pray in the spirit to get the marching orders of the day. That's good. So that's why that one's listed there, and none other the, of the spiritual gifts are listed there. This is a commandment. Jesus is leaving the earth. He is giving his disciples direction to take territory and occupy it. But it's sad because you and I, we've pastored for years. We see people that are in debt that just simply stay in debt for decades. We see people that are sick. They stay sick. We see people that have problems with addiction. They stay in addiction. And yet we also see people that get healed, we see get out that, of debt, build multi-million dollar businesses exactly. that used to live in HUD housing. Right. So we see what, all is kinds that of what is the difference in that? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I think part of the difference is they have been taught to put their walls up. Mm. I think they have been taught the enemy's bad. Satan and Satan's scary. A uh, disease is bad. Uh, you know, I'm going to build my walls up, you know, and I'm not, you know, I'm going to be, a, I'm afraid of the devil. They have not been taught properly that he has zero authority, okay. nor have they been taught the promise of where they're going and how great it is and why they want to get there mm -hmm. and how they've been designed by God to actually act out and take territory that God shows them. Yes. The Bible says the kingdom of God suffers violence but the violent take it by force. So this is an act, as you said, of moving out. It's an act it's of charging and taking marching orders from heaven and going exactly out in right. His authority. And it's not a matter of our authority. It's a matter that we've got the government of God 
backing yes. you. You've got God. When you hear his word, you pray in the spirit, you get direction, you step out in that word. You've got the government of God backing you as you go into battle, exactly. as you take the territory. And that's the difference in winning. Every time you look at the Bible, people of God were facing some situation that looked impossible. That's right. Always. And it was God giving them a word, them obeying that word, stepping out in that word that they saw victory. That's right. And that's really what we're talking about. It's about victory. It's not about just, no, that's just right. hanging back. It's a, it's a matter of charging and in let's there. Let's define victory again. Victory is not the walls coming down. It's part of it. Right. Victory is stepping in to the, the assignment. What has God told you to take and occupy for the kingdom? That is the win. Yes. These things the enemy throws at us are all about discouraging us, about lying to us, about telling us we have no future, holding us hostage, but the walls are down. Just like the Red Sea parted, mm -hmm. the walls are down. So what are you waiting for? Get into the promise. Just jump right. in there, learn your authority, learn how it operates, learn who you are. That's the thing. Learn who you are in Christ, take territory. The promise, the good life is on the other side of the pressure. And it's going to be great. It's going to be worth it taking territory. And when we come back, we're going to talk about how that can carry out in your life. And we have an amazing free gift for you. 